A couple of years ago, I worked at a gas station. It was a pretty small town, about two hours north of where I was from. I was living there temporarily while I worked on flipping the house I owned. I worked on the house during the day, and I would work at the gas station on nights to help pay for it. The gas station was right off of a major freeway, and we would get lots of people passing through town. One night, I was working a 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. shift. I didn't mind these shifts because they would not be very busy and I always found things to do. Most of the time, I would be the only one working for a majority of the shift. On this night, there was a decent amount of people coming through for the first few hours and at about 1 a.m., things really started to quiet down. I mopped the floors and then went back behind the counter. Then I noticed a car pulling into the station. It was a regular black car and looked pretty normal except for when it got closer I noticed that it had no license plates on it. The car drove very slowly around the front and then went to the side of the building where I could no longer see it. About five minutes passed and then a man came inside who I assume was the driver of the car. He was a very tall man, about six and a half feet tall and pretty thin. He was wearing a black sweater and gray pants. He had a very serious look on his face. He walked in the front door and looked directly at me. The counter was on the other end of the store, so he was probably about 40 feet away. He didn't say anything and just looked at me. Eventually, I couldn't take the awkwardness and I said hello to him and waved. He responded by turning and walking to the other side of the store. He just stood there, no longer looking at me but looking at the wall or whatever items were for sale in that area. I was pretty confused at this time and I was getting kind of creeped out by this guy. Eventually, he walked into the bathroom which was at the end of the store. About 10 minutes passed and he remained in there. Another customer finally pulled into the gas station and got some fuel and came inside to pay. I was so relieved by them finally being a normal customer. I almost wanted to bring up the man in the conversation with them because it was so strange, but I felt it wouldn't be professional, so I didn't. The customer left and I once again felt pretty creeped out knowing this guy was still in the bathroom. A long hour went by and we didn't get any customers. The man didn't come out of the bathroom either. I felt it had been long enough and I decided to walk over to the bathroom. It was a bathroom with two stalls in it so I could just walk in to wash my hands or something and it wouldn't seem weird. I got to the bathroom and opened the door. I saw that the lights were out and it was pitch black in there. I reached around for the light, but when I found it, I saw that it was already switched on. This freaked me out. I thought about just leaving, but I decided to turn on the flashlight to my phone to look around. When I did, I looked in the first stall and it was empty. Then I saw the second one. I could see the man's legs from the bottom of the stall. Then I shined my light up to see the man's head poking out from above the stall, staring directly at me with the creepiest smile I have ever seen. I dropped my phone as soon as I saw him. I picked it up as quick as I could and then ran for the bathroom door. I got out there and the man did not come out and follow me. I went back to the counter and debated what I should do for a few minutes. I really did not want to go back in there, but I also didn't want the man scaring customers that went to the bathroom, and I felt that it was my responsibility to keep the place safe. As much as I didn't want to, I decided to go back and tell the man he would have to leave. I walked back to the bathroom and opened the door. I shouted to the man that he needed to leave, but there was no response. I can't say that I was surprised. I decided to just put an out of order sign on the door because of him and the light not working. 
Several hours went by and I only got a few customers. Amazingly, the man never left the bathroom. Finally, at 4 a.m., my coworker Devin came in and we worked together for the final hour of my shift. I felt much safer and I told him what had happened. We decided to go into the bathroom together to see what the man was still doing in there. We walked in with our flashlights shining, but when we got inside, we saw that both stalls were empty. Not a trace of the man at all. I have no idea how the man was able to leave without me seeing him. Thinking about it still freaks me out. A couple years ago, I worked room service for a hotel. This one day, I had an overnight shift, which was easy since no one usually orders food that often. An order came in at around 4 a.m., just chicken parmesan, a popular item for the limited night menu. Once the cook made it, I got the tray together and took the elevator up to the room on the 14th floor, the top floor. I walked down the corridor to the room to knock on it. Usually you knock, say room service, and once they open the door, you place the tray on the table and give them a check to sign. One reason I liked working room service was from the good tips you make. I always was tipped good since I always brought up the food earlier than the time frame that was given to them, as well as being a nice girl that didn't try to talk too much since most people just want their food. When I knocked on the door and waited for the person to answer, I heard movement on the other side. Not unusual since it's them getting up from the bed or couch or muting the TV and walking over. But this noise was different. I couldn't explain how I made the mental note of why I thought it was different. It just didn't sound normal. Like it was more movement that would be appropriate for the size of a normal hotel room. I don't know what they could have been doing. When the door opened, a normal looking man was there. I assumed a businessman since that's the usual people that stay at my hotel. I noticed he looked very worn out or tired and I thought it was just because it was four in the morning. As I set the tray down, I heard the door close and I wasn't weirded out though because all hotel doors automatically close if you aren't holding them open. But what was weird was when I heard the lock get set. I turned around to give the guy the check to sign and I tried to act normal even though I was getting nervous. He seemed too cheery for this time of night and started asking a lot of personal questions like what my age was and if I grew up in the area and what city that was. I answered how I was 19 and even though I was from the area, I just said I'm from around here because I felt weird telling him info like that. I just started getting the creeps. I think he noticed I was getting uncomfortable and started getting closer as he was signing the check. Then he looked me up and down in the most disgusting way. I already felt violated. Right when he made eye contact with me, he lunges at me and tries to grab me. I moved to the side as fast as I could and jumped on the bed. Then I leaped off the bed for the door. I barely got the door open when he grabbed my arm and I started screaming as loud as I could to hopefully wake up anyone that was on that floor. Since he didn't want to get caught, he let me go and right when he did, I ran down the hallway to the employee elevator and locked the door right away. My heart was pounding, not believing what just happened. With working room service, you always get some creepy people, and I always thought of bad stuff that could happen when delivering food, but I never thought it would actually happen. When I got down to the lobby, I told the night manager what happened, and he said he would call the police and report the incident. I stayed until the police showed up to give them my statement, but when they went up to the room, the man was gone. Not one trace of someone being there except the untouched plate of food I delivered. The name on the reservation didn't match any real person when they looked it up in the system, and the room was paid in cash 
so no credit card name or info. My heart sank knowing the police couldn't do anything else besides have them be on the lookout for a tall man with dark hair and pale blue almost gray eyes. That was the most description I could give since he didn't have any unique features and that this man was just out there somewhere. I then went home since I couldn't finish my shift from being so shook up. I was even more paranoid because I realized I told the man I lived in the area. He could be easily watching me leave the hotel and drive home. Since it was late, no one was on the roads, so it was easy to see I wasn't being followed as far as I knew, but my heart was still pounding the entire drive home, expecting I would see him somewhere. I got home and went inside as quick as I could and tried watching TV to distract me from spiraling in possibilities of what could have happened if I didn't get out of there in time. I had to quit my job since I was so paranoid of something similar happening again, and I don't think I can ever work at a hotel again from this incident. I work as an overnight security guard at a healthcare facility. My job is pretty easy most of the time. Usually, I just sit at a desk and watch over security cameras as well as taking care of things around the building. There are mostly just a few overnight nurses and doctors working and we don't typically get many people coming in the building. On one night, it was about two in the morning and I was sitting at my desk. Then I noticed movements on one of the cameras. It was dark and I couldn't really see, but it looked like a person walking past. It was coming from a room down the hall. Then the camera went out. Nobody was supposed to be in that room at this time. I decided to go over and check it out. When I got to the room, it appeared to be empty. I did see tape covering the camera that was on the wall though. That room connected to another room and so I walked into there to see. That's when I saw a man that was dressed in all black. He turned and looked at me and was about 15 feet away. We stared at each other for about a second and I was about to speak, but then he charged at me. I prepared myself to take him on, but right before he got about five feet away from me, he stopped, turned, and went the other direction. I told him to stop. Instead, he ran for the window and jumped out of it and ran away. I chased after, but when I got to the window, he was long gone. As it turns out, the man had broken in through the window. What his plans were once he got inside, I really don't know. All I know is that it was the weirdest and most bizarre thing I have seen while working there.